Hey, what's going on? Eric Cortina, Texas Barn Aminiums. Today we're gonna do some epoxy flooring. I'm gonna show you how to take your floors from this to this. All right, let's get to work. All right, so the very first thing you need to do is clean that concrete. I mean, it needs to be spotless. So the way I like to do it is first, we just come in with a leaf blower and blow it all out. That way you can get your wood chips, your dirt, anything that's sitting on the surface, you can get rid of it. Remember, when you're blowing out your floors, make sure you also blow out all your walls. There's a lot of trash on those walls and you wanna make sure that you get it off. If not, it's gonna fall on your floors at the worst time possible. So clean walls and floors, blow them all out. After you do that, I like to come back and just inspect the entire floor and make sure there's no paint, no drips, no anything. If there's any of that, scrape it off. You can use soy gel, which is a paint stripper that's going to uh, uh, lift that paint and that way you can get rid of it. After that, I actually like sanding the floor down. I understand that we're gonna acid edge this thing. However, the acid edge is only going to edge the concrete. If, if the concrete is rough in any way, it's not gonna take care of that, okay? If there's any paint that are sticking or anything that's stuck to the concrete, that sanding screen is gonna take care of it, all right? That's gonna kinda, in a way, flatten your floors, and then the edge is going to etch your floors. We like to hit it with a sanding screen, 60 or 80 grit, do two passes perpendicular to each other, and that's going to create a lot more dust. At that point, I like to apply water and then just vacuum it all up because if you try to blow it out with a leaf blower or even sweep it, all that dust is gonna race up and what's gonna happen is it'll, it'll seem clean and then all that dust is in the air. Again, it's gonna get on your walls, it's gonna get everywhere and then it's going to settle back on your floor. So that's why I like to vacuum it all. So after it's all cleaned up, you can actually, uh, you can use water, you can use NutriClean. You can go back and just scrub it one more time, okay? Again, if you have anything that covers those pores up, that acid is not going to etch your concrete, okay? It's gonna act as a film, which is gonna prevent the acid from getting on the concrete itself, okay? So you want those, <laughs> you want those concrete floors spotless before you even acid etch, okay? So at this point, I like to scrub with a broom attachment, a NutriClean, and again, you vacuum the whole thing up. After your floors are spotless, now you can acid etch, okay? Uh, the way I like to acid edge is one to one ratio, water to muriatic acid. You want to end up with about the equivalent of a 400 grit sandpaper. You want those floors to be etched. All right, so you make your mixture one to one, muriatic acid to water, and you apply it with a sprayer in a circular motion. The circular motion is gonna prevent you from getting patterns on your concrete. Plus, it's gonna give you a better chance to, to get a really good coverage on that concrete. You wanna make sure this entire thing is coated. All right, so go ahead and etch the floors completely. Once you're done with that, now you have to neutralize that acid. The way we do it is we use ammonia and water mixture. Typically, they recommend a 20 to one water to ammonia ratio. However, I like to do a 10 to one, just a little bit stronger because ammonia is cheap anyways. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna time how long it takes to get five gallons. Okay. And then we can simply stick the hose in there and do the math. Sometimes you amaze me. 55 seconds. All right, so 55 seconds. Let's stick it in here, reset. Still open, right? All right. So, let's go two minutes. All right, Leroy, turn it off. All right. That's about 10 gallons and two, well, I guess that's one gallon of, uh, one gallon of uh, ammonia, 10 gallons of water. We're actually using a commercial scrubber here, but you can actually literally just throw the, the, the ammonia and water mixture out with a cup and work it in with a stiff bristle broom and vacuum it right up. When you acid etch the concrete, there is a film that's gonna build up on the surface. Again, you don't wanna leave anything undone you have to cover everything all right because the point of failure is going to be not in the middle of the slab it's going to be around the edges where maybe you didn't clean it as good okay again clean it all up so after you neutralize the acid with ammonia and water 
come back one more time and give that concrete one more rinse just with clean water okay uh, now in a way you are cleaning up the ammonia so you want to give it one pass maybe two I can't stress this enough these concrete floors need to be super clean okay you scrub it again just with regular water and you vacuum it all up okay you, the vacuuming is is very important because it's sucking the water out of those pores okay if you try to mop it or anything you're just kind of gliding over the top so super important to vacuum it so do this a couple of times now you're ready to apply your epoxy however <laughs> now your moisture level is high on your concrete because you've been putting water all day on this thing okay so do not get in a hurry and try to apply your epoxy at this time because you will have failure so you need to make sure that your concrete dries up overnight at least okay you want that moisture level to be below 50 percent when you apply your epoxy don't get in a hurry it's gonna kill you so now the concrete is prepped it's clean it's etched it's spotless now we get to apply the epoxy you need to make sure however before you do that that you tape off all your boundaries okay your doors uh, anything you don't want to get epoxy on it needs to be taped off all right so this particular slab that we just cleaned up we actually sealed that one okay uh, i've showed you many times how we seal concrete so you can go check out some of those videos actually i'm going to put a link right here to the latest one however i want to show you how we do epoxy so i'm going to take you over to my house now where i did my man cave i did that about three years ago and we actually did a blue epoxy floor all right, so as you can see, Leroy is putting some painter's tape down. The reason for the painter's tape is that's where we're going to stop sealing the shop. So if you notice, he put the tape right where the overhead door comes down because there will be a small seam. So whenever the door is closed, you're not going to be able to see that seam. And we'll show you right now. See the, the edge of the tape? That's where the sealer is going to stop. And as you can see, that's right in the middle of the door. So you won't be able to see it when it's done. Up to this point, the, the process is identical, okay? Where it changes is how you apply sealer versus how you apply epoxy. So let's go do that. As you can see, we have a mixing area ready to go. And you can see we staged all the kits. We have A and B on every single pile. So that way when uh, you are mixing, you simply grab a full kit right there. You don't, you don't want to put them all in a pile and then when you're trying to mix, you're trying to find what, where the A is and where the B is and all that crazy stuff. So stage your mixing area properly. And as you can see, we are right next to the door. So this is the door that we're going to come out of. We have the concrete etched. As you can see, it's, it's equivalent about a 400 grit sandpaper and it's ready to go. Okay, we are ready to put that epoxy down. So you wanna make sure that you mix that epoxy properly. Epoxy comes in two parts, part A and part B. So I like to add about 5% acetone to the kit. That's going to increase your pot life and it's gonna make your epoxy just a little bit more runny that will allow you to put it down more evenly. So what I like to do is I like to add the acetone to the part A and mix it. Okay, so you pour your part A into the bucket you add your acetone, you mix those two together, make sure they're nicely mixed. Do not mix super fast or you're going to introduce air bubbles and that friction is going to start heating up your epoxy which is going to shorten your pot life. So don't, don't get carried away with the mixing process, okay? All right, now you have it mixed, now it's time to put it down. What we like to do, we actually like to put it down on the concrete, like you've seen here. You just put it down and you're going to need a notched squeegee, okay? That is the trick to this entire process. That's going to allow you to put down the exact same amount of epoxy on the entire slab before you roll it, okay? If you don't do this, if you try to dip and roll that epoxy, you're going to have color variation throughout the entire slab. Why? Because it's gonna be thicker in some spots and thinner in others. So make sure you get a notch squeegee, okay? That is, again, I'm gonna say it again, that is the key to this entire thing. All right, so now that you put your epoxy down with your squeegee, go ahead and back roll it. You can use a half inch snap, non-shed, solvent resistant roller. Do not skimp on these rollers, okay? Because if, if, if any lint pulls off of this thing, it's going to ruin your floor. So get high quality rollers or roller covers. Do that first coat. You're gonna need two coats, okay? 
So you're done with the first coat, let it sit overnight. Pox is gonna take a while, don't worry about it. You're going to get some bubbles. So what happens is you have in the pores in the concrete, there's air, okay? When you pour that epoxy over it, that epoxy goes down into those pores and evacuates that air. So it creates bubbles, but because epoxy is 100% solid, a lot of times those bubbles don't escape. So they just sit on the surface. Don't worry about it. Again, you're gonna get bubbles. It's normal, all right? So go ahead and just close everything up. Uh, make sure the wind doesn't hit it and just go home, all right? Come back tomorrow. The next day when you get back, you will notice you're gonna have bubbles on the surface. Take your 100 grit sandpaper or sanding screen on your buffing machine and buff it all down. This is like painting a car, okay? You, this is the equivalent of wet sanding between coats. Go ahead and sand it all down. As you can see right here, <laughs> all those little bubbles and things that were on the surface, uh, we sanded them all down, okay? They're gonna, it's gonna look like you're really screwing up the floors, but don't worry about it, okay? It's fine. Sand the entire thing down, clean it all up again. Uh, at this time, you can take a leaf blower and blow it all out, or you can take a dust mop or anything, just make sure they are clean. All right, so now we have the first coat done, we have the epoxy sanded down, and we have it cleaned up. It's time to do the second coat. The second coat goes down just exactly the same way as the first one, okay? Mix your epoxy the same way. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is you wanna mix one kit at a time and that's it. Do not do more than one, all right? The more kits you mix at a time, the shorter your pot life. So you don't wanna do that, all right? Mix one at a time. Uh, it's best to have two guys applying the epoxy and you have an extra guy mixing. As your epoxy gets low, make sure you get the next guy mixing so that you don't have any cold joints, okay? So after you get done rolling, this is what it looks like. This is the second coat. Now, at this point, you're done. You can leave it alone, you'll be happy. However, I like to add another coat of polyurethane on top to protect the epoxy. I like to use polyurethane 100. That is a very good top coat. At this point, if you have any imperfections on your epoxy, like bubbles or anything, you can go ahead and sand them down and, uh, and then you can put your uh, polyurethane. You shouldn't have any issues though. So anyway, uh, go ahead and roll your polyurethane on here. You have, like I said, you have 24 hour window where you can apply it. Uh, if you go longer than 24 hours, you have to scuff up the epoxy, okay? So keep that in mind. This is what it takes to do a very good epoxy job. If you do it this way, it should last your lifetime. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. We'll see you next time. We are Texas Barnominiums.